Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. We have a Jaguar XE, I think this is. It's not the XF, it looks like the XE. So I've got a little clip here that he sent me from the Jaguar garage. As you can see there, I have moved the DEF injector. And if I just focus the camera there, you can see there is crystallisation going on in the deep in the SCR. As you can see there, this is a sign that the incorrect quality of DEF has been used. The DEF issue will require an SCR, a NOx sensor, drain and refilling the DEF and retesting to ensure we have fixed the problem. Again, this is in red and will require a replacement SCR and the NOx sensor as well. So you can see there that they've uh, recommended a replacement SCR, NOx sensor and possibly an AdBlue tank as well they said. Okay, just inside the car here we have a message, no engine restarts are possible. So this guy has driven the car all the way to me, um, he's driven it down from Solihull and he obviously couldn't switch the car off he's took a bit of a risk by coming down uh, so he's hoping that i can obviously sort out his problem here so i've just hooked up my diagnostic uh, port here and i'm using a new machine today so i'm using here the launch euro tab 2 and i'm going to click on the jaguar um software there so we're going to wait for this to load up Got a little loading menu coming up there. Okay. Uh, okay, we need an update on the, it's my first time using it. I should have had this already updated first, maybe. But uh, luckily we've, we've got Wi-Fi in the van, so it's gonna update from that. Okay, just running a false scan. So we have all NOx, false, NOx exceedance, add blue false, insufficient quality, efficiency below threshold, P20E, P2B, A9. NOx system inducement active. Okay, so I've got the car raised up here and I'm going to open up the add blue injector um, and hopefully unblock it now this has been at the Jaguar garage so I'm not sure if they've already tried to clean it but I do know the Jaguar garage has had it open so I've just undone the four millimeter allen key nut there now we can just pull open the clamp and release the adblue injector so it looks like they have sort of cleaned it up a little bit compared to what it was I've seen a video where they've sent it and it's uh, it was all sort of clogged up a lot Let's have a look at the injector port. No, they haven't cleaned it So the Jaguar garage has opened this up and sent him a video to say that he's got crystallization on it So they need to replace the SCR system the AdBlue injector and the AdBlue tank and all of that uh, But obviously we're here to try and clean it out and save him on the bill so the first thing I'm going to do is just use a pick, just to pick away all of this. Just to add blue crystallization basically. So 
good to clean the, this out. There isn't any companies that make any sort of fluids for it yet. There are one company that makes an additive that you can put into the AdBlue itself. But uh, what I'm going to use today is uh, deionized water or battery top up water basically. Um, and I'm going to use that 50 50 with this launch DPF cleaner. So I'm just going to open this up now. And we'll just use a 50 50 ratio of the launch cleaner and the deionized water. So 50 50 what on this is going to help it oxidize. And I've used this method before, it worked pretty good for me. So now I've just topped it up with the deionized water there. I'll just put the lids back on. So now I've got the compressor hair hooked up to my tubes. And I'm going to connect it up to the cleaning gun. Just get that ready there by the wheel and I can climb under and get it connected up. So I can just get that inserted inside there. I'll just take off the rubber holes actually. It looks like it's going to fit better. Nice tighter fit just on its own there. Now I can just squeeze the fluid in there. Hopefully the pressure doesn't bust it out. Just gonna fill that up as much as possible. Just make sure that's pushed in nice and tight. Try and get it sealed as best I can. So that's it, we're all out, all out of fluid there. So just going to disconnect that and I'm just going to rub a little bit of that into the AdBlue injector there, just massage it in. Just get your finger deep in the hole. You can just see there straight away immediately how clean that's coming up. Now for this one, she's a tight one, so you might have to use a small finger. Just give it a little clean around. So just try and get some of this foam out of the way so we can see what it looks like. Okay, we've got all this connected back up together. Um, what I wanted to do actually was leave the blue injector disconnected just to test it, but I didn't do that first. So we're gonna start the car now, get all of this fluid pushed out. And then after that, we're gonna disconnect the blue injector again, just to make sure that it is spraying. Okay, I'll let that fluid sit in there for about 10 or 15 minutes. Now we can uh, get the car started up and get it pushed out. So one thing about the message that comes up there, if you read, um, incorrect diesel exhaust fluid quality detected now that can come up for a number of reasons not that it doesn't actually have to mean that the fluid is is a bad quality um it can be that just the you know the, the port is blocked as it was there you know all the crystallization blocking the port so the adblue fluid is not doing its job and then it detects that it's not a good quality um or the adblue injector itself is blocked or the adblue pump is not working uh, all of that sort of stuff so basically the AdBlue isn't getting through to the exhaust system and, and lowering it enough, which is more common than it being actually that the the fluid is a bad quality. So it does actually say that I can start it up, so let's see if it does. Yes, it does start up, but uh, it doesn't actually give me the mileage that's left yet. Um, the customer did tell me that it was on zero restarts, but it seems to be, seems to be starting okay for a minute. It just says it's not going to restart very soon. Now I'm going to give it some, some revs, get all of that pushed out. Just give it a few hard accelerations from, from down, which will blast out the, uh, the fluid that I put in. 
and hopefully blast out all of that crystallization as well. Now I'm going to use this laser pedal depressor and we'll just connect that up to the pedal there and just give it a couple of squeezes so we can hold it on the revs. So now that's going to take about 10 minutes to burn that away. Okay, so now I've opened up the bonnet here. We have uh, another pre-cut here, DPF. And uh, we're going to open one of the... going to open a, an entry point here and get it, get some cleaner through it. We'll probably open the oxygen sensor. Put some, put some cleaner through it while the engine's running. Uh, you, I'll use a high temperature probe for that. So again, I'm going to use a, another mix of the fluid and water again, the ionized water. So that is the same bottle there. Used uh, obviously half for the underneath and the other half for the for the pre-cat. I will just top it up again with some of the water there. I'm going to use a 22 millimeter crow's foot spanner to get into the oxygen sensor. Just slide over it there like that. I'm gonna get it open. Now I've cracked that loose, just use a glove to open it out. Just wind it around. And we'll just sit that over there somewhere. So I'm just gonna detach that and I'll get on the high temp probe here, which is this one. And again, you can buy this from the launch website. So with the engine running, I'm gonna insert this high temp probe in there and just point it down towards the catalyst and we'll again now we're just going to spray the fluid in there and again we're just spraying that in there you will see a little bit of it coming back out so we'll just ease off for a minute do like five second bursts of the engine running Just wind that back on now. So again now we're just going to give it a few revs. Just to get that cleared out. Again you just be getting the fluid dripping out the back there. So I've disconnected again now the AdBlue injector. And we're going to come back up and start the vehicle. So before I start the vehicle actually what I'm going to do is clear these uh, faults and reset the AdBlue because I'm not 100% sure but if the faults are there the AdBlue system is probably just disabled itself anyway. So back over to the diagnostics here. Clear the codes. Clear succeeded. That doesn't actually mean that it's, it's actually completely gone yet because if you go back in and read them again they are back. So what we need to do is go back and go to special function. So we will need exhaust, emissions, particle filter, powertrain setup, particle filter replacement. We need the AdBlue. AdBlue reset. Nice that it gives you the uh, actual wording, no fancy, no fancy wording there, just a straightforward add blue reset. Diesel exhaust fluid injection pump replacement. So we're gonna we're gonna go with that. 
say that it's had a new one and calibrate it. Yep. Ignition is on number two. Yes. No communication error. Let's make sure that the ignition's on properly. That's done successfully there. Press OK. OK, we've done all of the resets there. Let's uh, start it up. It looks like we've still got an engine management light on. Boot is open. Okay, so we've got the message that's gone for the AdBlue about the starting issue, but we still have a engine management light on there. So let's go back here. Uh, let's go back again, is it? Let's do a clear of ECA. A few codes there. We've got one code remaining. End of the line failure during first fill test. Ah, so it looks like it's something to do with the fill test. I've told it that it's obviously been filled with AdBlue. So I'm not sure what that code's come up. So what that code seems to relate to is the AdBlue tank being over full. You can see there, it is full right to the top. So I might have to drain a couple of litres out. Taking off the wheel and pulled off some clips to get inside the wheel arch, which is the uh, add blue tank in here. And I've disconnected this hose just to drain some of the fluid out. Okay, so that says that's completed successfully there, what I've done is let me just turn the ignition off yeah, what i've done there is this one powertrain prime and pressure test of the adblue system so now let's try start it up hopefully that's done is it it's taking me a lot longer than expected on this one yes that seems like it's done it okay let's go back um, let's go into the diagnostic system, read the fault code, fault code is gone, let's go back, and it's clear, so that's all good, and we'll take the vehicle for a test drive. So that's it, it's all complete, and we'll see you next time.